Hello and good evening. Uh, my name is Vincent Hediger. I'm a professor at Goethe University teaching film. I'm standing in for Danny Fairfax tonight, who was the chief curator of the series. Um, tonight we have a very special guest. Jordi Cifra is a professor of communication at the Pompeu Fabra University in, in Barcelona, which incidentally is a partner university of uh, Goethe. We have a joint international master's program, so Barcelona students come here and we send their students to Barcelona. <clears throat> so there's already that connection. Uh, Jordi Cifra was originally a specialist, a, a communication scholar with a specialization in public relations and uh, the analysis of propaganda, actually. Uh, which is already an interesting connection to Buñuel. Um, and he was always a, cinema, a cinephile, but he has recently moved from the communications section to the cinema section in Pompeo Fabra, which is one of the strongest uh, cinema departments in Spain and one of the best in Europe. Otherwise, we wouldn't be connected to them in our master's program. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Jordi Cifra is now the head of the cinema th uh, group in, in Pompeu Fabra, and he's one of the leading specialists on the work of Luis Buñuel. He has published uh, in French Le Cinema, uh, Luis Buñuel et le Cinema in 2020, which is now a standard text, uh, a work of reference. But his connection to Buñuel and Buñuel's work goes uh, much deeper. He is actually the head of the Buñuel Foundation in Calanda, in uh, uh, Buñuel's uh, hometown. Um, he himself was uh, born in the north of Catalonia, uh, near Figueras, where Dali was born and grew up. But it doesn't stop there. Um, he actually now owns the house of Buñuel. That's his second home, in Calanda. And his first home, you, it, Buñuel's first home, your second home. home. Your first home, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> How would you not make Buñuel's house your first home? Um, and he, uh, he's the director again of the, of the Buñuel Foundation, which uh, um, uh, houses uh, much of uh, Buñuel's paper and Buñuel-related papers, publishes a book series which um, is entitled Buñuel and the Avant-Garde. Originally, the idea was to put Buñuel in context, but then so much research on Buñuel came uh, Jordi's way that it's now basically a book series on Buñuel. There's a, a journal that he publishes. Um, so uh, he's not just a specialist on Buñuel. He's, in a way, his inheritor and the curator of his estate. And with that, I seek the podium to Jordi. Thank you for coming and thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent, to invite me. Uh, okay. I'm a fan of Buñuel, so all what I say now is uh, maybe not is 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 not objective, but uh, I will try to to introduce this film because, in fact, um, when Daniel Fairfax asked me about which film <laughs> I would like to present. I, in that time, I was interested, I was seeing uh, the, the Phantom of Liberty, but it was a uh, pick it up. By <laughs> so, uh, yes, of course. So, and I said Tristana. And after I say, why, why have you choose Tristana to, to, uh, to present in, in it in, in, in a series like that? I think that because uh, Tristana is that kind of films in Buñuel. Remember, for me, Buñuel, uh, I have to, to, to say that for me, uh, what happened, my, my, my relationship with Buñuel is that I can see uh, his films uh, twice, third time, and almost always I, I found something different. And there are some films in which you, 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 you are not, uh, when you see again, you find an, uh, a nuance, uh, uh, something different, an element. Maybe the films, you can see them different accordingly with your, your feelings, with your age, I don't know. And in Buñuel, uh, 
you see, basically Buñuel, uh, it's interesting because you can sort of their films, uh, his films in different ways, but they're, normally in this case we have a film based on a, on a character, not Tristana, Viridiana, Nazarene, no? it's a, and then you have other films that can be sorted as uh, a theme or a subject or a topic, no? The uh, Exterminating Angel, uh, etc., etc., okay. Uh, Tristana is a, is a, is a novel, well, was a novel, it's an adaptation, right? Uh, Buñuel said that uh, in the interviews with Pérez Turrain and De La Colina that the, 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 the person or the, the, the author who influenced him the most was Pérez Galdós. Mm, maybe. I don't know. Remember that Buñuel was a liar, and he enjoyed to be a liar in the in his interviews, right? Uh, and uh, but it's true that uh, Pérez Galdós influenced him, and Buñuel, for example, uh, when you know, his most uh, famous sentence is "Thanks God, I'm an atheist." No. Everybody knows uh, that sentence. That sentence is, you can find it in a book, in a novel of the national episode, Episodios Nacionales of Pedro Galdós. It's not, uh, it's not uh, a creation of Buñuel. And so Buñuel uh, found in Galdós a lot of uh, sources for building uh, his personality. But at the same time, he was very aware that uh, his adaptations of the novels of Galdós were a Buñuelian film. And even, you know, basically, uh, as you know, uh, Buñuel adapted officially two novels of Galdós, Nazarene and Tristana. But there are a third one, and the third one is Viridiana. Viridiana is a hidden, is a hidden adaptation of Alma, uh, another novel of uh, uh, of Galdós, uh, but it's difficult to find it. It's difficult to find even in Spain the novel, and I suppose that in English and uh, in, in in German it, it would be very difficult. But Tristana seems a bit. But imagine that, uh, in fact, uh, Buñuel. Uh, uh, for Nazarene and here in Tristana, if I remember it well, is is not the the, the credits don't say uh, based on Galdos novel, but inspired in Galdos novel. And Nazarene, I don't know if you have seen Nazarene here in the in the series. You have seen it, yes. yes. Uh, Nazarene Buñuel didn't like to put based on a novel of Pérez Galdos because he said that it was his uh, he was uh, he was inspired by Galdos, but. The, the, the film is different than Galdós. And this is true, basically. Uh, uh, Buñuel found in Galdós and other novelists, because next week yes, uh, next week or in two weeks you will see the set of scripts of the Desire de Pierre Louis. I don't know if you have seen the diary of a Chamberlain. Buñuel found in, the, in those books, in the Galdós novels, and, a material in order to 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 readapt to to recreate and to 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 like like a, I don't know like a gemologist no that uh, he take a piece of a, or, last, or like an alchemist no uh, maybe uh, in order to transform the original in 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 his uh, in his own uh, uh, work Tristana. Uh, why Buñuel was interested in Tristana? Because he was interested from the early in the 60s. In fact, the first screenplay was written in 63, but after the scandal of Viridiana, uh, it was impossible to, because Buñuel uh, uh, wanted to, 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 to shoot the film in Spain. No, because Tristana is a, is a, is a, is a and, and, and it didn't make sense don't shoot the film in Spain, so, but it was very attached to this project. Why? Because of the quality of the novel, not. Tristana is not the novel, the best uh, appreciated novel of, of, of Buñuel, of uh, Galdós, sorry. But uh, I don't know if uh, 
the audience has seen the film, or if you know the film, but but for uh, especially for uh, for uh, thanks to the miracle of Calanda, as you know, uh, Buñuel grew in Calanda. Calanda is present in the films, in the the drums of Calanda, the is the the heart of Spanish, uh, the the medieval village. He uh, for, for him was a medieval village. But in Calanda, he discovered uh, the death, the religion, a lot of themes and topics that affected and influenced his work. But one of these facts is the miracle of Calanda. And maybe, I, as I, I suppose that you don't know what the miracle of Calanda means, let me read uh, what um, a specialist on the Vatican miracles uh, Vittorio Messori explain about the miracle. Eh? I don't like to read, but I think it would be interesting. To, to, you know, to At the end of July 1637, Miguel Pellicer, a 20 years old man from Calanda, was working as an agricultural laborer at Castellón, 60 kilometers from Valencia and about uh, 140 kilometers from Calanda, right? On his, on his uncle farm. While steering a cart by reading one of the mules that was pulling it, Miguel fell off, fell off, probably because he had fallen asleep. The cart wheel passed over his right leg, breaking the tibia. He received initial treatment at Castellón, then was admitted to the hospital of Valencia where he stayed for five days. He then decided to leave for Saragossa in order to receive treatment in the hospital dedicated to Our Lady of the Pillar, the Virgin of the Pillar, and the patron of Spain, to whom he had great devotion. The, third, the 300 kilometer journey took him some 50 days. On his arrival, the doctors observed that the leg was in an advanced state of gangrene, leaving no other choice but to amputate it. In their testimony, the doctors described the leg as very felgnomous and gangrenous to the point of appearing black. In mid-October, two master surgeons, Juan de Stenga and Diego Millaruelo, carried out the operation. The leg was cut, four fingers below the knee. Although they had made the patient drowsy with alcoholic and drugged drinks, as was the practice at that time, Miguel suffered excruciating pain. In his torment, the witness would later say the young man called upon the Virgin of the Pillar and incessantly and with great fervor. The leg went then buried, as was customary at time, in a special part of the hospital cemetery. The stoop was subsequently cauterized with fire. Miguel Pellicer stayed in the hospital for a few months until in the spring of 1638 he was provided with a wooden leg and crutches and released from hospital. For the next two years he made his living through begging. He was provided with the necessary authorization and the sanctuary of the pillar and, uh, and at the center of the pillar. During this time, he was certainly a familiar slight for a large number of the citizens of Zaragoza. He regularly returned to the hospital for checkups and treatment through Dr. Estenga. Every, every evening, he will ask the servants in the sanctuary for a bit of the oil that burned in the lamp and use it as ointment to rub the stub of his leg, with the conviction that he would also be able to draw the aid of the Virgin upon him. In the first month of 1640, now 20 years old, he decided to return to his parents at Calanda. After one week's travel, he arrived during the second week of Lent, that means between March 11 and March 14. Unable to help in working on fields, he once again took up begging, going around the, neighborhood, the neighboring village and donkeys, on donkey's back. Many people at the time must have witnessed that this lower leg was missing. According to Messori, eh, the, 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 the author that I'm reading, 
At about 10 o'clock of the evening on 29 March 16, 1640, Pellicer laid himself to rest, because his bed was occupied by a soldier of a garrison that stayed at Calandar overnight. He went to sleep on a provisional bed in his parents' room. Between half past 10 and 11 o'clock, his mother entered the room and saw two feet appearing from below the cloak that covered her son. Thinking that Miguel Juan and the soldier must have changed places, she called her husband to resolve the misunderstanding. But while removing the cloak, husband and wife were dumbstruck as they realized that this was indeed their own son. They shook him, they shook him and shot at him to wake him up. Some minutes passed until Miguel Juan, Miguel Pellicer, eh, woke up from a deep sleep. He told them that he had dreamt of being within the sanctuary of Our Lady of the Pillar and rubbing his leg with the holy oil, as he had done so often. Soon all three agreed that the restoration of the leg was due to the intercession of the Virgin of Pillar. So news, even that, that means an even, and there was a, 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 a new in all the region, and even the, the king of Spain uh, visit Calanda. No? This miracle is very present in Calanda. In Calanda, if you have a, 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 a if you go to the, the if you read the Wikipedia, in fact, thanks to the miracle, Calanda has reproduced the Church of the Pillar in Zaragoza. I, I don't know if you have visited Zaragoza, but there's a big, uh, the big cathedral, the Cathedral of the Virgin of Pillar. So in Calanda, thanks to the miracle, they have, uh, they have reproduced part of the, of the cathedral and is the, even the, um, the, the, the October the 12th, who is the holiday of the the Hispanic and the pillar is the the, the big hol the big uh, holiday of Calanda. So the miracle was very influenced all the people in Calanda. Uh, even now, there are a lot of people that believe on the, on the miracle. Of course, my, I remember my first time when I loved I loved a lot with uh, when I knew the 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 the, 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 the miracle. Some people was very offensive because uh, they said, oh no, uh, the, the, the miracle exists and uh, the miracle was uh, true and this is uh, very important. This is the reason that Buñuel said in confidence um, uh, to choose Tristana, the novel of, uh, of Galdos, uh, to make the film. Uh, you will see why. I suppose that a lot of people here know, know why, <laughs> but if some one of you has not seen the film, you will not. Why. The idea of the miracle of Calanda is one of the reasons, of the main reason of the interest of Buñuel. But it's not, it's not the, the, it's not the same. You will feel, uh, I think that uh, what is very important when you see that film is the idea of, for me, it's like a self portrait of, of, of Buñuel. I think that um, the character, the protagonist, the Tristana Don Lope, the person, the character uh, played by Fernando Rey, is Fernando Rey is like here in this film an alter ego of Buñuel. In alter ego in the 70s, remember that Buñuel was uh, 70 years old when, when he made the film and uh, Don Lope is like uh, all the, the analysts of Galdo's novel uh, think that this is like a Quixote, it's like a Quixote, it's like a, a Don Quixote uh, uh, of, the, of, of the late uh, 19th century. No? There are a lot of, uh, of features uh, that Don Lope share with Don Quixote. And it's curious that the name Don Lope, Lope maybe is a reference to Lope de Vega, the adversary of uh, Don Quixote in 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 the in the 17th century in, in Spain. No? So um, this idea of uh, of remembering of memories in Buñuel is very interesting, because at the same time um, the film uh, takes place in Toledo, not in Madrid like a novel. And I don't know if you if you know that Buñuel loved Toledo, and with Lorca and other Dalí and other 
intellectuals, so painters, uh, poeters, uh, po uh, poets, and other writers in the Spanish uh, Residencia de Estudiantes in, in the in the under the, the in the early twenties or in the decade of, of nineteen twenty. They Buñuel founded the Orden of Toledo. The Order of Toledo was, uh, and they go, they went to Toledo every week to spend uh, to 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 go to drink, to eat, and to spend all the night walking around the the the, the city because they found they found it uh, very very uh, very beautiful and and they were very attached to 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 Toledo. So Buñuel. Um, Another thing that uh, another another element that uh, that gives to the film this idea of of memory of self portrait of, of Buñuel is is the fact the, the fact that the, the film takes place in 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 Toledo. At the same time, uh, there's very interesting that um, uh, one of the elements that some that people. Uh, that, that that is very important to stress is the idea of of uh, of uh, the person the, the the character of of Don Lope, as you can see, Don Lope is someone even uh, is uh, the typical uh, bourgeois, uh, but at the same time who defends the freedom, who is uh, someone who defends the idea of the surrealism. Uh, or the, the idea that the surrealist defends it in, in, in is, is some some kind of, of the evolution of of the surrealism in in, in, in 1970 at the same time is someone very very concerned but by, uh, by by the reputation and Buñuel was very concerned by his reputation he was someone who who who, who behind his mask of of a liar someone with sense of humor one who bah, it doesn't matter what the people say it, it doesn't matter what the public uh, said about my films in fact uh, he he received every week a press releases of all of him and all the um, and his films no? he was he, he, he hired a, a press agency who that sent to him all the information about Buñuel and his films every week and in the archives of Buñuel you find how he stressed eh? the the critics, how he stressed what the, the critics said, what the, the, the journalist said, etc. etc. He was very concerned by his reputation. Very concerned. And in 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 in, 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 in the in the film you, you will see that. Even in Galdo's novel is interesting because there are a lot of of uh, oh, there, there are some sentence. No? There's a very interesting sentence that I found that that the servant says to Tristana, for example, if you want to preserve your reputation, you have to submit to a little slavery. No? This idea of reputation as a slavery is very present and is another element that um, that is that 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 uh, stresses this idea of of uh, self portrait of 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 Buñuel. And we can, at the same time, we can find a lot of topics and motifs that 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 are uh, because Tristana, I don't know, is it, very important. Eh? For me, it, uh, with one screening, is you cannot understand, you cannot apprehend uh, all the, the 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 nuances, all the 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 ideas that the film. Uh, has uh, no and, and and it's very difficult uh, for me it's what happened eh? there are some films in Buñuel and especially for example Nazarene happens the same the area of a Chamberlain is the same every time I see it I see the, those films I find different the, the, I find new 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 approaches new new concepts new new ideas that that is different and here um, you will find some some at the same time is it seems a, a, is a is a is a if you have seen Viridiana you say okay a new triangle no is a new triangle you have the old man the young girl and uh, and uh, the servant eh? uh, okay but um, at the same time uh, you find a lot of uh, a lot of Elements and and a lot of elements of the staging of the mise en scène, 
uh, that Buñuel and 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 it seems a, a film very simple. It seems a history very simple, but uh, behind this idea or this perspective or this this approach, there are a lot of of, of very interesting of very interesting. Uh, of very interesting um, ideas and, and stakes from, from Buñuel. For example, uh, as normally we, people, or oh, people, uh, this is idea that uh, people think that Buñuel was more a, a provocative by the, the subjects, or, and he was not a very um, exquisite um, metteur en scène, no, uh, director. I think that there are very important elements here on, on mise-en-scene, no? of, of, of a staging. Uh, how, for example, I, I, I have asked to, to have this image in, during my presentation, because for me, this image, this framing is the paradigm of Buñuel. The, in this framing, you get the paradigm of the mise-en-scene of the staging of Buñuel. Here you have a, a, a shot in which a framing, in which there are, there are the, uh, symmetric, they are geometric, in which you have uh, the contrast, the putrefaction, the, the, the young, the, 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 the old man, the, the desire, death, this is a tomb, this is a tomb of the Cardinal Tavera in, in Toledo, right? This is a tomb of Berruguete, in which the Cardinal Tavera, Cardinal in, in Toledo, is, is death and is in, in, the, in, the, in the step of, of decomposition. Eh? And this is, 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 is the, the idea of decomposition for Buñuel, Dali, and, and, and Lorca, but basically Buñuel and Dali used this idea in order to denounce the, the, the romanticism and the, 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 the art of the moment, etc. Based on the, and this uh, look is, is symmetric, the, the, the mise-en-scene, the, the formal mise it's very classical, very traditional, but behind that you find the contrast, the, the force of the contrast between the, the beauty, the best, the, the young, the, 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 the death, the desire, the death, etc., etc. And this for me is very, is, very, is very interesting. At the same time, it's important, and I, 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 I try to give you some tips. Uh, for example, the sound of the film. We said, okay, Buñuel uh, uh, didn't take care of the sound of the film and the music. Okay, this is a fake. Uh, think, I, 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 I'm very interested in, in the, last, the last scene of the film. It's, uh, <laughs> it's maybe a, a paradigm of, of the... Um, uh, what is a paradigm? is a good example of how Buñuel can make a, 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 an inflection in, 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 the, in the narratives, but how he used the sound of the bells, the sound of the nature, and in the last scene of the film, uh, the sound is the, the sound of the wind and the bells backwards. And this is a real... Uh, a special effect of sound. And so um, it's an example of, of Buñuel is very attached of the technique. The photography of the film, the photography of the film, the photography of it is something is decadent, is brown, is that are not, uh, is different of, of the rest of the films of the period. Is, uh, is something, uh, 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 something decadent, as I said, the film happens uh, during the Second Republic, but the, 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 they are not, uh, the colors are, are very opaque and, and, and is very, very, very well work. The point of view of the narrator. I don't, uh, it's difficult to, to avoid, I have to avoid the spoiler, right? because it gets good. But um, the, 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 the film plays with a different point of view, and we can discuss this after. The point of view of Tristana, the point of view of Don Lope, the point of view of, the, of Buñuel, the, the filmmaker. There are a lot of, there are some moments in which uh, that Buñuel 
um, you don't know why he why he moves the camera in the, why he he used now the point of view of that it's there's very and I have my theory but I cannot explain now because I, I maybe I will I will disclose some some aspects that I'm not interested in, you know and maybe you will. but um, the the casting today nobody <laughs> Tristana is an orphan and Buñuel used the actress who represents the Marianne, the symbol of France, and he sells us as an orphan. This is incredible. And now it's impossible to, uh, uh, that, that, this is, okay, I think that is, is part of the big, the big directors, no? When you say that Vertigo is, is, is <laughs> uh, Kim Novak in Vertigo, okay, you say, do you imagine someone different than Kim Novak in, ver in Vertigo? No. Okay, and maybe uh, um, Kim Novak is not, okay, in front of uh, Ingrid Berman, in front of other actors. You, you, I have my opinion, but it's not the same. Tristana is presented as an orphan at the same time. It's, it's, it's incredible. And, and how to... Uh, the casting of the film, the, the, the role of, of Lola Gauss, the servant, Saturna, mm, uh, is, 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 is the contrast. It's the Spanish woman. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm sorry, but it's, it's the, the beautiful and, 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 and the, the bad and the beautiful, but basically is is that. But it's the, the contrast is, is this, this, this idea of contrast, no? Fernando Rey. Fernando Rey is, is, is perfect as Don Lopez. I have an anecdote regarding Fernando Rey. Uh, just a parenthesis. Uh, you know that Fernando Rey played, uh, I don't know the name, uh, in French Connection. No, the in French Connection, he played the name uh, in, in French. Okay, the. Chandier. Eh? Chandier, the drug dealer. Exactly. Yeah. William Fredkin asked his uh, producer or casting chief. I want for this role the actor who played the last film of Buñuel. Okay. William Fredkin, the last film he saw, okay, the, the, the director of casting said, okay, I, will, I don't know if he, he knew the, the last film of Buñuel, but the last film of Buñuel was uh, Tristana. And he said, okay, Fernando Rey. The question is that uh, Fritkin didn't see the Voix Lactée and Tristana, and for him, the last, <laughs> the last film of Buñuel was Belle de Jour. And uh, Fritkin thought on Paco Rabal, on Francisco Rabal, who played it in, in uh, and, <laughs> and Fritkin, in his memories, he's playing that, oh, I went to the airport of Los Angeles, waiting for Paco Rabal, and I saw Fernando Rey, and I can't say not. And, and finally, Fernando Rey ha had the role uh, thanks to this mistake, and finally, uh, Paco Rabal played in, in, in the, in the um, what's the name, Sorcerer, the film of William Fredkin, the uh, remake of uh, Le Salaire de la Peur, the, the um, Henri Georges Clouseau. Okay, so there are a lot of, I think that, in sum, what I want to say is that uh, that there are a, a lot of of uh, this film is very rich in 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 in, 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 in staging, in the direction, in in the themes that Buñuel uh, interested, and I think that um, in the first vision maybe you can see it as a history of okay, uh, a history of very Spanish. History very local, but there are a lot of, of topics, subjects that interest Buñuel. And even, even you can see a lot of intertext, intertextual relationship with other films. I just, uh, the last scene, the last scene of, of the film, the last scene of the film is a flashback. It's a flashback between quotes. Uh, it's a, for me, is a for me is a remake or is a revival of the end of the Ashdor, Ashdor, uh, 
Then of Dajdara, I remember the, the castle of the Duke of Seligny. I don't know if you remember the film, the sad uh, uh, Jesus Christ uh, represented by Christ. Okay, but the, the, the connection is obviously. Amen. The idea of Viridiana, this Viridiana, a lot of uh, people consider Viridiana the masterpiece of Buñuel. I think here Buñuel goes beyond and is more subtle. And finally, Oh. the idea of dream uh, here the, uh, dreams were basic for Buñuel, Buñuel uh, but Buñuel made a film uh, in Belle de Jour in which uh, okay, the, the, the border between dream and reality are fuzzy and then the, spect the, the public or the audience uh, is uh, the one who can decide where, 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 uh, where we are on, on, the, the, on the realm of, of dreams and, and where we are on the realm of, of reality. Either. The question is that here, but I, 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 we can discuss that, that here I think that Buñuel is, uh, even here we have dreams, because you always say dreams, because uh, like in the disco charm, I, I'm dreaming, and you uh, dreams. The idea of dream is even the film can be considered as a dream, as a dream of the of, of, of the protagonist. But we can discuss that later because I think we have to 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 see the film and to see the film. And 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 what is interesting is how at the end, uh, how at the end uh, the the last scene. Um, removes the the the, the, the conscience and, and removes the, the 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 place of the spectator of the public as as a spectator and 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 this, oh my god what has happened now that why Buñuel has done that but it's interesting to discuss later because uh, it doesn't make sense to tell you now uh, what happened at the end and and it's not the the, the good and finally it's interesting some people say. Uh, uh, this is the the story of a of a transformation too. No, the, the, the story of the transformation of a it's part of the transformation of of the characters, the characters that move from liberalism to more conservatism. Uh, a, a, a girl who moves from the innocence to a, a, a femme fatale, almost a femme fatale, is very interesting, but. Is there a, a very interesting theory that, um, it's not a theory, it's a, an opinion, that the films, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the hidden influence of François Truffaut in the film. Why? You know, because François Truffaut was the fiancé of Catherine Deneuve during that time. And François Truffaut was almost during almost all the shooting in, the, in Toledo, near Deneuve, etc. And some people say that that Buñuel was influenced in, in 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 by the mise en scène, by the staging, by the 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 of François Truffaut. I don't know. It's very difficult. But there's something. Uh, look, Tristana is in the in the end of the um, um, the last film of Buñuel. You have the Volacte, you have the Discret Charm, and you have the Phantom of the Liberty. And uh, the the set of screw of Judaism. and Tristana is the only film without career. Is the only film in which is a Spanish uh, made is uh, uh, produced by in Spain. Uh, okay, with a casting with an international casting, but um, he has something uh, connected with the scene, the French cinema made and that thing. Maybe Truffaut, maybe not. It's just an anecdote. But I think that uh, finally, what uh, the most important here is, is that in 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 front of a film, there is a story, something okay, in a story of a triangle again. Uh, you can find uh, a lot of topics, a very Buñuelian film, and I think that uh, if you are interested, is the first time you see it, is you. You see it again. You see it twice, thirty times, four times. I, I, I mean, at least in my case, 
is the film that I always I found something new, something different, something it's very, 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 uh, very, very uh, uh, studied by Buñuel and with a lot of, 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 of his topic, his subjects. Even, for example, the, the, the Kabbalistic, you said the Buñuel, there are two dreams, there are two, the, the, for example, we are always eating in this film. Eating is very important. Food is very important in Buñuel films, in his life too. But here, there are a lot of, of, of food, even feeding <laughs> a lot of, uh, and something, the repetition, the idea of repetition that Deleuze was very inter interesting, the death detected in Buñuel, that the repetition in Buñuel here, the petition. The fate, Tristana choosing between two streets, two, choosing between two pieces. Okay, I think that the best way is to enjoy, and if you want, after we, we discuss, uh, after seeing it, and we can go in deep what, uh, what I've just uh, suggested now. Okay? okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry? The bar is still open. I have to go and ask for a dry martini if you want to do it Buñuel style. Or and or oh, Buñueloni. You know the Buñueloni? No. It's excellent. The Buñueloni, you know the Negroni? Negroni is Campari, is vermouth, is martini, or or and gin. Or et and gin. Yeah. You can to change the Campari for the Carpano. Carpano? That's yes, that is the Buñueloni. Okay. Three parts of uh, gin, two parts of Carpano, one part of the uh, No, 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 but it's, it's excellent. It's excellent. It's excellent. The problem is that Carpano is not easy to find. But today with internet, you can find. <laughs> and, and the next time I can prepare some Carpano, uh, some Buñolones are very, the, very, very The good. next time we'll have drinks as part of the presentation. Yes, before. Uh, yes. And we, sh we, and we see just the uh, Chien d'Alou in 20 minutes, it's finished. Okay, um, let me start with a, with a simple question. Uh, what about Saturno? Yes, he's the character that in the novel is, is very, is, is the most, I think he's the key person. <laughs> I don't know he's the key person, but every time I, 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 I see again the film, I think it's a very important role. In fact, it's, it's, very, it's much developed here than the, in, in the novel. In the novel, it, that it's just uh, it's it's anecdotal. <sighs> you know um, the film. Okay, the last scene scene is a, is a flashback, but the last moment is not a flashback. Yeah. People can have in mind that yes, it's a flashback because the last the last uh, the last moment is the same that the, the the first one. No, it's not the same. Saturn and Tristana come. Yeah, to to the uh, to the, the the place in which Saturno is playing football with uh, the other guys, and at the end they they come back at home. So it's easy to to <laughs> to to to, the, to think that this uh, all the film has been a dream, all the film has been in mind of Tristana, and Tristana has give give him the. The, um, the the apple is curious because in the in the first screenplay he was a peach. Okay, maybe it's the peaches of Kalanda. Kalanda is famous, but but by the peaches, but is is a, is, a, is is so is a symbol of the of the scene, no? And <laughs> and all it's uh, all what happened between the first uh, moment to the the last one is a, is a dream. Well, it's a theory, and then we have a dream inside the dream. There are a lot of of elements of uh, what is it, for me is exciting that in even in maybe in in Belle de Jour you have the dream and no dream, and you have you can imagine that some parts are, are, are part of a dream and other reality here um, um, behind a, a, an appearance of of, of a common real, uh, common narration and in, in uh, real there's there's. There's a, a, a hidden dreams or different dreams mm -hmm. because the the the, the scene uh, after 
the scene in the, in with the bells, with the two guys, uh, in which Tristana is appears like a, like a girl, like a more young girl. Also, there's a it's it's a little bit uh, it's not very. Uh, it seems uh, something an addition of of in the history, in the story in in which. Uh, they, 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 it's, it's, it seems also a di that finish with a dream with the, the clipper of of the, the the head of the of the the, the, the lobe, you know? and Saturno plays a role very enigmatic. He appears at the end. He he takes more plays, even in, in the the scene in which uh, Saturno goes to when, when is, uh, the, the the once Tristana is amputed has like amputed. He go to his uh, his restroom. This is for me is clearly a, 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 an imagination of, 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 of Saturno, mm -hmm. because Saturno is in the garden, he's, he's looking the, the window, then we see that he go inside, but <laughs> when he said, okay, you don't like to be with me, so I, we, we, we see again Saturno in the garden, mm -hmm. uh, as continuity as the last scene. That is, is, so there are a lot of, of of symptoms or images that you don't know, you don't know if they 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 are in the mind of the of of the Tristano or in the mind of Saturno, maybe in the mind of of the Lope. And this is what in this is the the the, the I think the the um, which Buñuel plays with that and and with the, the with the audience. No, in in I think it's 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 very interesting from that point of view. Yeah, I mean the the moment where he, she comes out on the balcony, or yeah. but this we is could also say where he imagines her coming out on the balcony. She walks out on her crutches, then puts the crutches away, and then opens her her bathrobe, which you know is only possible with the Chester. She uh, does it if she has both legs. <laughs> why not? Yeah, yes. Why? Why not? No. Why? Like, why? Like yes, because she it, does that. He's afraid that the reaction of Saturno is, is, is like, uh, oh my God, what happened? That no. So this is what is the. In, this is what is the, the 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 strength of of, of Buñuel in the film. That if you analyze it, it's it's, it's, it's and, and a lot of other other. In fact, uh, for me, the the center, one of the centers of the film is when. Uh, Don Lopez said to Tristana, "That don't dream. <laughs> you are alive." And he say, "That don't dream." Maybe this is the summary of, of the film. Mm -hmm. I'm alive, <laughs> so the, uh, so I can dream. No, and all the everything, everybody is alive, so everybody can dream. And that everybody, maybe except uh, Saturna, but uh, is the most. Um, <laughs> the, the the most uh, the, uh, the the character who, who, maybe yeah, but but maybe in a, in a, in a next uh, screening <laughs> I can see a, a scene in which mm. maybe is, a, is an imagination of Saturno why not I mean as you said the, you can uh, repeatedly watch these films and and choose pick one character to follow mm. and and uh, in in a way the there are different stories also in 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 the films but uh, just to add one little thing regarding Saturno um <clears throat> i would say the, the their first encounter on the football pitch mm -hmm. after he fouls yeah. the other guy and is basically punished by by the coach or by the it. teacher and then she uh, and, and then uh, um Tristano sort of takes care of him and that is the one uh, genuine moment of tenderness yeah. she has with uh, a male counterpart because the Franco Nero character, you know, she's interested yeah, yeah, in yeah, him, exactly. and he's interested in her, and exactly, exactly. But that's sort of a sexual desire, and they miss out on each other. Exactly. But but the the interaction with with Saturno in the beginning is the one genuine moment of of tenderness, and then what's interesting in the moment where he imagines her uh, showing her breasts to him. Uh, it's followed by <coughs> by the <coughs> the montage of of uh, uh, pictures and statues of 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 uh, of Mary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And and so that's a really interesting sort of story that tells about 
the mother of God I think it's and totally their relationship a, and as a sexualized relationship. I, I, but we I, have a question. And onanism, or, or onanism in the, the masturbation, no? But, but yeah, right. Saturnus, is, <laughs> we see him, well, we don't see him, but his role of, uh, yeah. and yeah. even some symbols of Tristana um, with, a, sorry, yeah, with a piece of bread and the egg, yeah. There are a lot of Bunyol is playing with uh, but, but the, the, the <coughs> sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah. uh, thanks very much for your lecture. I have two questions. Uh, first, I want you maybe to say something more about Deleuze and the moving Im image. And the second point is um, the question about Toledo. I mean, Toledo is, of course, the city of El Greco. And obviously, Deneuve looks like some of Del Greco's women in his paintings. And even if you look at the color, colors, that's in the beginning especially, you see El Greco colors. Now Toledo is also like, like a labyrinth. It's, it's, it's a closed city. Absolutely. And the football field is the only open place, open space, so to speak, where there is freedom where you can play. But he's filmed it, he's shoot it like a labyrinth. In which yeah. he used the traveling, yeah, yeah. very interesting, yeah. Because uh, sorry, sorry, no, uh, it's basically okay. because keep on going. Yeah, because that kind of things is what excited me. That in, uh, remember the the the, the is a traveling, but well, it's a traveling moving camera. The shoot is very different. Is is moving. Uh, uh, that is the staging is is labyrinthic in the only place in which is not labyrinthic, and that happened in another moment, in which uh, uh, before they go to the Cardinal Tavera. <laughs> but this is a, a question of a point of view. I don't understand. I don't understand. It, it surprised me how Buñuel, when uh, Cristana uh, asked about an arch, and Buñuel, the camera follows the arc as, he, he, as uh, uh, placing the camera as the point of view of Tristana, and that kind of thing that, um, okay. But yes, and this is very interesting because they go to Toledo, when they went to Toledo with the, the, the Orden of Toledo, they went always to the to see the tomb of the Cardinal Tavera and and the the, the painting of the Conde Orgaz. So and the influence of uh, Buñuel said that they did. Uh, she said that they he 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 did uh, he didn't love uh, paintings or etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But Buñuel was very um, had Dali as a friend and and he some moments in his films are composed and are influenced not just by Goya because people is easy to say okay Buñuel and Goya is, is easy but by Velázquez and, and, and by El Greco and this is this is uh, very interesting your remark regarding Deleuze oh, uh, I think that Deleuze is a uh, for me <laughs> Deleuze is not easy but Deleuze has um, he's very fine it's very interesting analysis of of, of Buñuel and the image, uh, the image impulse, I don't know, impulsion image, uh, the, the the image pulsion or uh, is this impulse or pulsion? I don't know in English, no. And but here, for me, it's interesting. Uh, for, for example, mm, but here, uh, what the list says that uh, and uh, uh, that uh, of the Buñuel's naturalism. That is, uh, is very a, theory, a little bit complex. Here is very obviously because um, to explain, uh, if you have read the, the novel, you see that the novel is too realistic, and here, here the film is more naturalism, is more uh, the the role of the 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 the, the what uh, what is in the name of the say in in, in the list says the for example the amputi. The amputee leg is what Baudelaire said, les déchets. I don't know in in uh, the the leftovers or the leftovers the, of, uh, of the garbage. The, the same that the pieces of of uh, the pieces of meat in Los Olvidados. That kind of 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 uh, of uh, of um, symbols of putrefaction or or that kind of thing. And here I think that that the objection and decay. Yeah. Yes, and 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 here. Deleuze is, and Deleuze is the only one who make connection between mm, Buñuel and Raymond Roussel uh, through the repetition, no? Mm. And here the repetition is very interesting, eh? because you have the dogs, the, the idea of the dogs, the, 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 um, you have the, the visits in the, in the coffee. There are a lot of 
repetition and a lot of uh, the duplicated situations that is very interesting in, in, if you analyze the to uh, uh, Saturno uh, in masturbating in a, in a, is it this idea of repetition this idea of two two streets to um, the election two streets and two peas etc Th there are a lot of uh, Buñuel is not a re uh, is not the repetition as in the as in the exterminating engine you see the same scene uh, repeated but two same situations and it's, it's like a binary film here you have some binary situations that then are very connected with this idea of, of repetition of, of 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 the naturalism that that Deleuze says the naturalism of Buñuel is based on, on but the, the idea, the character of Tristana, even the, the transformation, because here we assist at two transformations on Lope and Tristana, but this 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 movement from the the young and innocent lady uh, uh, girl to a femme fatale is is is, is very is, is 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 closer to the Zola. Or the novels of Zola and that kind of French naturalism, and the realism of the Spanish novel represented by Galdós, for example. I mean, the the the, the first shot, just to uh, underscore that, the, the very first shot is the Greco quote or a Greco reference, the view of Toledo. Yes, because which is exactly the same point of view and the same framing yes. as Toledo's, uh, as as Greco's probably only. Uh, large landscape painting, which is the view of Toledo. Um, and then the mode of, of the labyrinth is interesting because, uh, you know, th and that's another repetition, uh, Tristano asking the question about the, the, you know, which, which of the, which of the columns is your favorite? Yeah, exactly. And he says, they're all the same. Yeah, but he's what? Uh, he's and then she said, yeah, but you have to pick one. And, and, uh, yeah. and then later there's the question of which road to which take road in the to city. Take, um, which is uh, so, so the P that you have to, yeah. uh, that is, uh, is this idea of, of the, the, the fate, no? Because mm. this is, I think there are a lot of ideas, of, uh, when you put in the film, a lot of ideas, a lot of, of moments of his life, the, the, mm. the, Bazaar, the fate, no, the, and but it's in it's very interesting the approach because if you know the if, and, and a first lecture of the novel you say okay it's a good adaptation is but but, but yes is is he at the same time there's a, he 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 maintains the the soul of the of the novel <laughs> at the same time he make he makes a, a, he makes a film a Buñuelian film. Mm. And is, this is very interesting, and and there are a lot of situations that 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 you discover why why he has done that. Sometimes, maybe uh, with Buñuel, it's difficult because uh, you 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 have a tendency to think a lot about why he has made. Uh, maybe it's not, there's no secrets, no. But but finally, the it's very interesting. The, the there are some situations, but why to why to 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 to, to play with the the fate and the, the why to, to, to the, the scene of uh, have to choose between one or two roads, why that, no, it's okay. But is, is, is his, uh, I think his, his genius is here in that kind of situation that you, then the, as a public, as an audience, you cannot, they are not a, a, <laughs> a rational, because this is a surrealism, they are not a rational uh, justification. Mm. That, that's mm. it. Why that? Okay, but this in a film that is more, if you compare with the three last films, is more realistic. In the, the history is more lineal, and there are not uh, big, big, big uh, broken situations. Uh, compared with uh, the Phantom of the Paradise, or big, uh, compared with the. Um, May, and maybe it's the same, eh? maybe the, the idea is the same with the disco charm of bourgeoisie, someone, okay, here is a history uh, or triangle or, or for people because Saturno, but there are a lot of moments that, uh, what are you doing, what, why that, why that? And finally, yeah. the last scene, why a flashback is not a flashback properly, because there are some uh, <laughs> uh, chronologically, is not the the backwards. It, it, some say, uh, and in the in the screenplay, because I, I had it, they put okay, uh, sent uh, ten fives, 
four, three, one, and he puts, for example, in the screenplay, you can see send 10, eight, nine, that, the, he, no, he was, no, he, he was the proposal of, of Buñuel that to offer a, a, not a flashback in terms of all the scenes, chronological, but well, the majority, yes, but there are one or two that they are not chronologically, mm. chronologically backwards. So why? Well, maybe for playing with uh, yeah. and the last one is why you, you instead of seeing the two go, the two women coming to the they they, they leave. They, so they, it, they it's just away. to provoke the, the audience and say that yeah, this is a okay. Mo, f there's a one of the best uh, studies of Buñuel is the Maurice Drouzi, uh, the uh, Luis Buñuel, architect of the refs. He said this. He he said is a dream. This is all the film is a dream, but okay, it's a lecture of the dream, is an approach to the film, but you have a, a, a that's, older approach. I, I would say that's too simple. Um, this what, is too simple, yeah. Yeah, if, if, because it's, uh, I would rather speak about an indeterminacy, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a film that, that has, that, that, that can, you know, realistic reading is possible. As you said, there are certain references to, naturalism in literature um and and what i said the but, last but thing. but ultimately it's 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 not that clear that it's a dream what is clear is that it is very that it's not you can't really pin it down mm -hmm. you know you can't say this is the 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 level of reference this is where the reality is and the rest is built around it it's not like woman in a window by uh, Fritz Long's Woman in the Window, yeah, where in yeah, the yeah, end, yeah. no, no, it's, it's it's very clearly coded as a dream, and the whole thing, thankfully, was just uh, imagined. But there are dreams uh, sequences in inside this film, and and there's a sort of, as the French would say, en chasse. There, yeah. there's a dream in a dream in a dream, and and it's it's uh, it it can't be easily untangled. So I'd be hesitant to call this. A dream, but I would say yeah, yeah, yeah. it's ontologically indeterminate to use a uh, a complicated term. We have a question, please. Yeah, it's not so much uh, of a or question. A comment. Yeah, I think uh, what's uh, very interesting is uh, somewhere it has to start for, for her. She has maybe she sees all these boys playing around and they are, uh, I don't know, uh, they can't hear. They're deaf mute, yes. Yeah, and she lost her mother and that makes something with her and think, oh, okay, maybe I lost something right now, like, uh, I don't know, a leg or something. And now she sees, okay, that could be my future. And she has like this whole scenario going to, through her head and sees this boy who is not like corrupted through, uh, yeah, his handicap, because he's like still playing out his freedom and, yeah. I mean, the the the, the very first shot, of course, is the, the view of Toledo, which is also interesting, and I want to talk about the sound a little bit, because you hear the, the church bells very clearly and very loudly, and that sort of anticipates the scene in the bell tower. The bells is very important. But the, 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 yeah. The bells, Buñuel grew in front of a church, in which I live now, <laughs> and the bells, as he said in his memories, the bells are, um, they matter, the, the times go by, so right, thanks yeah. to the bells, and the bells is, the, is, 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 your, your, is your metronome no, of, the, of the time. No? And was upset by, by, by the bells and by the, and, and, and what I said in the last, in the flashback, yeah. in the flashback, I said, the 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 soundtrack is the sound of the wind and the bells backwards mm -hmm. and the very very interesting and as i said then now i can remember the the, the end of the the last scene of the large door which we have the the wind the snow mm. and the 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 the, the marquis uh, the Celigny. okay uh, killing or I think I, I, I use you, the, the, a girl, and for me, the, 
this idea of 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 auto portrait and memorands of 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 of, of Buñuel that Buñuel puts in his film maybe this is, this scene who was not on the screenplay of 63 because the, the screenplay of the 63 finished with a priest and take, having chocolate uh maybe is 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 the the thing is, is the other counterpart of 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 the is is a is a homage or it's a remember of the ashdor in which is now now who kills is the girl who kills the man who kills the the old man and in which the okay there's the wind the the, the snow and oh no maybe it, but it's what I think this is the regions of, of Buñuel when you you can imagine and Buñuel maybe said, but why? Mm. It's uh, well, but but why 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 uh, you have also the questions why Buñuel has put that why, and in in terms of mise en scène in terms of staging there are some solutions that and, and very very curious the first when they play football the. Fo Interesting. Mm. Another question up there. I think Toledo is also famous for um, sword making, and we saw um, a blacksmith workshop. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in the Civil War, Toledo was also scene of a very bitter battle, and I think there was an extremely bitter battle about the castle, about the Alcatraz in Toledo, and in the beginning of the movie we see Toledo intact, so the Alcatraz was... Because I think it's the same, it's, yes, but Toledo is intact because it was uh, rebuilt, was uh, restored, or Toledo, but I think this is the image, I think is a, 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 a principal declaration, the first, uh, is this is a film, uh, the first image of Toledo is 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 a reference to uh, the youth, the Buñuel youth uh, of the Toledo of his youth. The Toledo was the place that they like a lot, in which they went once per week, and in which they eat, drink, and 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 they spend all the night walking. And 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 and, and, and. so this is, I think, is a is a is a is a is okay. This this uh, first image. Is Toledo? Toledo for me is was and is the main uh, okay the the, the, the the place crucial in my life and what this hist this story will take place in this city because this story is also my story and Don Lope maybe is um, an ideal of well some some ideas of Don Lope are the same from Buñuel. But you know, when when she was old, was uh, has this idea. Eh? The, his his woman was as, as, almost a slave. Eh? He he was very strict at home. Uh, very, so it's, this is the the principle. But Toledo was rebuilt, and he uh, he went after uh, he was bombed. But this image of Toledo is an image of uh, of the seventies. Because the Alcázar de Toledo, the castle of Toledo, was rebuilt and recovered, and the the damage of the civil war are not uh, were restored during the Francoism, because Toledo was uh, is a symbol also of the of what what was one of the first cities uh, in which the fascist the Francoism was Im uh, implemented was uh, they conquered. The conquest, Franco conquest Toledo, uh, the beginning of uh, in '36, I, if I remember it well. And referring to Francoism, um, was um, it possible for this movie to be exhibited in Spain, or was it exhibited? Abroad? Yes, it was accepted. The, 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 this was no problem with uh, no the the censorship. No, the it was accepted. Uh, uh, I think that, in fact, uh, uh, is the late Francoism, and this film can be can be shot in Spain, thanks to a doctor, who was the doctor of a doctor friend of the producer, who was the doctor of the minister of the culture in Spain. So this doc, yes, and this doctor uh, acted as a medium between both. As a negotiator, and they say yes, we are interested because Buñuel, uh, okay, 
10 years after the problem, the, the scandal of Viridiana, but Buñuel uh, has, has um, uh, had made uh, Belle de Jour, that had made the Valacte. It's interesting for Spain that uh, to to host again Buñuel, and they the censorship uh, the same cens the censorship read the the screenplay and there was no problem. And re regarding that, there's an anecdote. Uh, Franco Nero said, Buñuel said me, okay, uh, Nero, the, uh, uh, Nero that, Nero that, Nero that. You, uh, and Franco Nero said, <laughs> you said, uh, why you tell me Nero? Because and Buñuel said, I won't, <laughs> I won't tell you Franco. <laughs> Franco, no, sir, I, I'm sorry, but Franco, <laughs> I will call you by your <laughs> name, <laughs> not by your first name, but your second name, Nero. Nero, 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 I, I'm sorry, but I cannot pronounce Franco, and even in Spain, and <laughs> my first time in Spain, and this. I think that Buñuel found, uh, this is, uh, is, is, this film is a, uh, I think he he enjoyed it a lot to make this film because, uh, and I think that there was uh, maybe uh, he was a reencounter of with uh, Julio Alejandro, the um, the screenplayer of um, of uh, Nazarin and Simon of the Desert. So it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, good things that and, and memories for Buñuel in in this period in which he was in continuous creation with career and his his screenplays in the last yeah. time with 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 Sarah Silverman films it's like an Iceland that film. I mean, technically, it's a French film. Yeah. Uh, Technically, is, a, is a, any, any eh? anything after '62 uh, in in Buñuel's over is a French film. Yeah, but, but I but think this is a, the, 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 the absolutely. Yeah, but it was possible for him to to make that film in Spain through subterfuge and uh, and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and the doctor. Uh, it's it's also a case of where the censorship is no longer very acutely aware of what's going on. No, because <laughs> <laughs> they they could have realized that this is a pretty subversive film, but no, they but didn't. They, did, they didn't realize that Viridiana, the end of Viridiana, for example, the end of Viridiana, they, mm. they didn't realize the symbolism of that. Right. right. And here. Please. Um, yeah, I have a question to kind of um, have various uh, interconnected elements, I think, um, like on the one hand, the idea of repetition that we've now seen in many of Winwell films, but also specifically here, this idea of, of choice, of choosing between two seemingly um, equal um, or copies of, of each other. Um, and then also connecting that to the kind of at the end where we have these flashbacks, but then somehow also kind of a new opening, almost perhaps like an alternative um, beginning, um, which kind of for me kind of begs the question, um, on Buñuel's stance here in this film on, on questions of kind of faith, free will, and, and chance, because um, throughout the film it kind of seems that um, like this choice that um, Tristana always kind of performs um, in the end is seemingly arbitrary, that it doesn't really um, matter for, for her fate, kind of what choices um, she herself makes, so it appears kind of free will as, as an illusion. But, um, and I mean, in, in many of the other films, um, it seems that Bunuel kind of opts for, um, like, in regard to the poor, perhaps, um, always kind of a similar fate awaiting, and in regard to the rich, kind of an endless, numbing repetition. Um, so also a little kind of um, opening for something new or some um, freedom of will. But here, th in the end, I don't know, that for me, this end kind of, um, left the chance of some some opening of perhaps of chance sometimes bringing right. some alternative despite this this overbearing fatalism. it's interesting approach and I agree with you because and this is I think one of the the difference regarding other films in which this uh, and this open and end and is what is um makes the difference regarding other films and it makes the difference as 
uh, and this is Tristana make the difference with regarding the rest of the films of the period. And for example, and here this opening, for example, is a kind of is is is, is a matter of broken um, some rules in 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 narratives. And for example, uh, uh, and it and and he doesn't need to push uh, the staging using um, sound effects or, or, or editing effects. And for example, in, 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 the, in the Milky Way, when he breaks, he broke the, he breaks the, 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 the relationship between time and space, for example, thanks to the using, for example, when they, they, they kill the Pope, and the two, one of the, the, the characters said, oh, uh, and you see, you, 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 well, all happens in his imagination, but you can see, but you can, you can the, 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 the audience is, uh, can hear the, the, what happened in the imagination of, of, of one of the characters. But here Buñuel plays, and in Tristana, and this is what's interesting, he doesn't need to push and to use that kind of mechanism of mise en scène or the, of sound, and for this reason, this is, is this aspect. Uh, if you put it in, in in general, makes the film, in appearance, very close, very close with the history that uh, or story that starts at the end with uh, okay with with a narrative very very mm, concrete. In contrast, thanks to this end, I think that, that kind of. Uh, that, that thanks to the the, the, the end, you you have a, a very open and you can you can push your imagination and 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 find other interpretation, other approaches to the film. And I think this is the 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 the, the, the most important thing of the film. Okay, in front of what it seems a, a, a very okay, very normal story without. Uh, Okay, uh, story of a uh, okay uh, love story or amour fou, even an amour fou, because uh, then thanks to that kind of, of of the use of 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 that end or the use of the flashback or the op offers this possibility of of what you say that is very interesting that maybe is a the an opening to to a fate and 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 using the images to to connect. And to put the, the 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 audience in in another in another that dimension, and this is what is interesting in the film. Sorry, because I <laughs> we have another uh, follow up question, please. Um, my question is about the relationship between Don Lobo and Tristana, which is very ambiguous, very contradictory. Um, she is his daughter and his wife at the same time, and it seems that she embraces him as her father, but she rejects him as, as her husband. One of the teaching lessons from her father is that he takes the side of the thief who runs away. So he is an atheist. He, he is um, esprit libre. He is a socialist. And um, it seems that she embraces this, but she, at the same time, rege she rejects him um, as a wife, when they are married, um, she accelerates his death, but at the same time she stays faithful or true to him by giving herself over to Saturu, who could, um, in the beginning, when he is protecting the thief, he says one should always protect the <coughs> suppressed and the um, people who are downtrodden, and that is what she is doing in in the end when she is opening well, herself to Satur. But because it's the history, the story uh, Buñuel reflects his same evolution. Buñuel, see, I think that this is a someone who, okay, uh, this is a this um, is a uh, the evolution of Don Lope is a contrast the involution maybe or evolution of Tristan, you know? and th th this is when one is one is coming this uh, the, the i think is the, the the cross of of two evolutions and in don lope in fact uh, is and this is clear is is the evolution of of buñuel of course buñuel was someone 
with uh, idealistic uh, what was uh, with okay against the press here and uh, liberal etc etc and with uh, when he became old uh, he renounced to his ideas and he reflected that in, with with don lope don lope reflects the Brunel's evolution of with ideas uh, okay even uh, uh, Buñuel, at the end, for example, the scene of the uh, having chocolate with a priest, Buñuel, uh, in the last years of Buñuel, there was one or two priests that they came at home with him and no, to, to have uh, not chocolate, but dry martinis and, and, and that, but to, to, to drink and, and to talk with him. And Buñuel was surrounded by priests. Okay. And this is, is and, but, and what is interesting is that Tristana, the evolution of Tristana, the Tristana uh, who was a young girl, Ampucci, the, the, but finally he, but this is, remember that the role of Tristana, the character of Tristana is closer, is very, is uh, closer to what happened in the, in the novel, right? And here I think he has, he has um, respected the novel and he works better because it's, one is it's uh, it's it's one it's uh, coming more con both are coming more more conservative, but one of course uh, one uh, uh, thanks to the the, 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 the the evolution of the age, the other thanks to the amputee and the problems of of health, and 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 his frustration with uh, with uh, with uh, with Horacio, no, but it's very interesting these these two evolutions and those two movement to from one character to another. But the Don Lope, Don Lope is 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 is, very, is different to the novel and is closer to Buñuel. Tristana is closer. Uh, the character of Tristana is closer to what happened with the novel, and here I think he 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 he, he has uh, keep the the role of Tristana because. He's a contrast. He plays a good contrast, uh, or he has a good contrast with uh, with Don Lope, and he works for the for the end of the story. Mm. I mean, I think you're you're pointing to something really important. Uh, Don Lope is ridiculous, some moments disgusting, but there is also a, a certain grandeur to him. He's with the libertarian spirit and uh, and all of that, but he's not one of those Buñuel characters who's driven by blind desire. So this is not an amour fou story. This is a story about compassion, and compassion doesn't really yeah. capture the, the 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 meaning of what's going on. Barmherzigkeit, the German term, is actually more precise because it keeps some of the religious meaning of it, or misericordia in Italian. Um, Misericordia is another. No, remember, Misericordia is the title of a novel of Galdos too. Right. Yeah. Remember, yeah. No, because there are a lot of of Galdos uh, themes or motifs mm. from other, other novels, novels in in in, this, in, in yeah. Tristana and Nazarene. Eh? Yeah. It's, it's and so, so this is not uh, uh, the, the relationships in this in this film have nothing to do with the romantic notion of love no. or sexual desire or anything. They're all compassion. A compassionate relationship. The like sexual desire is more, you, you can find it, I think, with Saturn in the hypothesis. In Saturn, uh, with Saturn, the relationship with Saturn, relationship between poets, <laughs> between mm -hmm. Saturn and, and Tristana. Yeah. I think, eh? Yeah. But, but also the initial moment of tenderness between uh, uh, Tristana and Saturn is a moment of compassion, of her giving him tenderness, attention, uh, a kind of love, knowing that he is the indigent, if you will. He's, the, he's, he's, uh, he's impaired, uh, he's an outsider, and the, the, uh, Don Lopez's attitude to the thief is one of compassion, um, and in a way her uh, Tristana giving herself up to his sexual desire is an act of compassion mm -hmm. rather than you know her enjoying it or or anything um, so I think it would be interesting to go through the film again and look at all those constellations as you know don't finish to see to see the film again you will realize some yeah. uh, I yes. think always uh, also maybe 
uh, uh, what's, his, what's his name again? Don Don Lope. Don Lope maybe is like a glimpse uh, of what happens when she does not make a decision. Mm -hmm. So he has his like morals and all these things, but then comes this woman in his life and this woman is not like she not uh, making a decision for her and he's like going like so crazy and losing all his uh, I don't know at the end there is no winner mm. she's like losing and he's losing all be, uh, all because she's not uh, making a decision for uh, something yeah. but, but that's the misery that requires yeah that's the misery and I think that's maybe they're like all miserable but but in a in a sort of a, a Christian eschatological sense yeah i think maybe at the beginning she like this uh, it's because it's like uh, uh, you talked about it it's all a dream mm -hmm. and she like uh, gets the glimpse of okay i don't make a decision maybe that's the outcome of it and at the end i'm not happy he's not happy saturno uh, the boy uh, maybe it's like this unfulfilled desire he's like always going masturbating and then she has this like you have to choose one pillar you have to choose one way even though they look the same at the beginning but mm. the outcome will be uh, maybe different and you have like uh, a different faith at the end and yeah okay thank you very much thank you Jordi again for the presentation and for coming to Frankfurt and in Thank you for inviting me oh sure and I hope you have enjoyed you have I don't know if you have seen before uh, the film or it was your first time some people it was for others it so Buñol said that he made the film because uh, because of the the lack amputee because he was a, uh, because of the 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 Kalanda miracle, right? He's the same, and from here and and at the same time, the the, the Kalanda miracle is again a part of the story of the same Buñuel. So there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, connections with his life, right? Also. Okay, um, the concluding event in this series is in two weeks. Next week. Actually. Next week, actually, yeah, in quick succession. So next Thursday uh, will be the final installment in this series, and we can probably already announce that the next lecture and film series, which starts on October 26th, will be dedicated to the films of Shotyajit Ray, the Bengali filmmaker, uh, the first Indian filmmaker to sort of be Bunyan recognized. Loved it. Sorry, Bunyan loved it. Yeah, yeah. loved it. Yes, to be recognized on the international stage, um, and again, the formula will be the same. We'll bring in specialists for the work of of Ray and uh, dedicate a full year of screenings and lectures to Shatyajit Ray. But before that happens, one last installment next week uh, and you're welcome to join us again thank you very much thank you yeah thank you